Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to this tutorial. We're going to be taking a look at creating US Army World War II aerial recognition panels. So to create the AL140 panel in this case, we're going to be taking some tin or aluminium foil. You could also use lead foil for this if you wish. And we're going to tape this down onto a cutting mat. I have removed most of the creases off our piece of foil here just to aid the cutting process later on in this tutorial. So on 135th scale, basic dimensions are basically 22mm by 52mm, it's basically a rectangle. And I'm just going to use a simple ruler here and uh, a ball tip pen to mark out the basic dimensions. Now I'm being quite careful to ensure that I make this line as square as possible. So the basic outline complete, now I'm going to start laying down the borders, which is a slight raised material border found on these panels. So for this we're going to use some 1mm pre-cut masking tape. And I'm actually going to put down the border while the foil is still attached to our cutting board. If you were to cut out the panel and then try to stick down your borders, you'll find that the foil will just start folding over on itself and it gets very difficult and messy. So this is by far the most efficient and simplest way. So once we're happy with these lines, I'm going to take a very sharp and fresh blade and start cutting out the excess borders. When dealing with foil like this, we have to ensure that our blades are brand new and razor sharp, otherwise we'll tear the foil. So do bear this in mind. So to create some realistic fold marks, I actually quite literally folded over our panel and then folded it on top of itself once more to create a realistic creasing effect. If the creasing is too intense, you can always actually press down the creases and remove them. Now to create the tie down loops, I'm just going to take a needle and I'm going to punch a hole into each of the corners. So in order to firm up and mould our panel to the back of our tank, so I'm actually just going to take some PVA glue and just build up some layers. I've also just placed a bit of cling film or surround wrap around the uh, stowage of the Sherman just to protect the paintwork. However, if you're building your Sherman from scratch or you're um, fighting a vehicle from scratch, you could actually or you just glue it down at this stage and paint it in situ. So the back of all of these aerial recognition panels was a fluorescent white. So we're just going to paint that in just in case any is visible from the overhang of our fecal. So for this case we're going to use some game colour from Flejo Ghost Grey. So once we have the underside painted, we're just going to take a small amount of CA glue and we're going to glue it directly to the stowage. This also gives us a little bit of time just to do some final adjustments before it dries. So the AL140 panel was a fluorescent pinkish red colour, or it was actually in fact a fluorescent cerise. So in order to create this colour, I've taken some Flejo model colour scarlet and some Flejo model colour German orange and roughly mixed it about 70% of the scarlet to about 30% of the German orange which gives me this lovely rich and very vibrant pinkish red colour.
Now there was other colors available to US Armour and these were including the AL141 panel which was an arc yellow. You also had in some cases the AP50 panels which were a little less common among Shermans. However the AP50 came in both an electric blue and a orange or a very fluorescent orange which would have been very common with airborne units. So some of these did find their way onto Shermans too. However the Cerise and the Arc Yellow would have been very common among Shermans. Now you can see I'm slowly building up this colour. It did take several layers just to ensure that there's no silver from the foil showing through. Now just to diffuse this colour as it is very stark, I'm just going to take two oil paints, in this case it's going to be titanium white and yellow ochre, and I'm just going to paint it onto the surface of our fully dried paint. And I'm going to take a very soft brush that's been moistened in white spirit, and I'm going to blend it back just to diffuse and desaturate this colour ever so slightly as it is quite stark. Now one thing you will notice, which for some reason I didn't film, is the actual border of our panel was painted with Vallejo model colour German uniform, which is a very light olive green. So by just using a small amount of oil paint, we just take the kick out of the cerise ever so slightly while still maintaining its vibrance. After all, these are aerial recognition panels, they are designed to be quite stark. However, we don't want them to become an eyesore. And after a little bit of weathering and a very fine layer of dust, we are left with this. So guys, I hope you really found this tutorial useful. It is a very iconic piece of allied armoured equipment, especially that of the US Armoured Force. Thank you so much for watching guys, I have been Shane, and I'll catch you in the next video.